So let's have a look at how we can overcome those artifacts. And just to reiterate that this method is not the standard method of compositing. You only need to use this if you're getting the artifacts that we illustrated in the last section. So the trick here is to work backwards from our final image. So let's have a look at our final image and visualize that in the composite view. Now we can take our final image and if we subtract the specular like so, let's see whether we have these in the right order. Uh, no, I don't. So let's reverse these. If we subtract our specular, what we basically get left with is our diffuse lighting. So I can insert here a color create node. And then I'm going to insert a null, which I'm going to call diffuse. So that's our diffuse lighting. And then I can add back in, uh, after adding a color correct node, I can add back in the specular, like so. And we get back to something that looks pretty much like our original image. Let's just check that by using a diff node. Like so. And what we should find is that there are no differences between those two images. So what this has allowed us to do is to change the lighting on our image using these two color correct nodes uh, without creating those artifacts that we saw earlier. So for example, I could tone down the diffuse lighting and I could change the color of the specular lighting. Here I've given it a slightly pink tint. Now one important thing to remember when you're using subtract or add or even multiply nodes in the compositor is that you've got to be careful which planes they apply to. And in this case I've made it apply to all of the planes when in fact I don't want to apply it to the alpha plane. And I don't want this add to apply to the alpha plane either because obviously it doesn't make any sense to add together two alpha values. So that's how to address uh, that issue of uh, the artifact in your composite. Now I want to show you a slightly more complicated case where our diffuse lighting is not just a single component, but is made up of a contribution from standard light as well as a contribution from a GI light. So I've put a GI light into our scene and all it's doing is using full irradiance on a background which is white, which is why our image is much lighter. So what I want to achieve now is the ability in the composite to separately adjust the contribution to lighting of the specular highlight, the standard diffuse lighting from the normal light, and finally the contribution from the GI light itself. And I want to do that in a way which avoids the kind of artifacts that we saw earlier. Now this is fairly advanced, so you can skip this section if you don't think you're going to need it. So let's go back into our compositor. And the first thing I want to do is bring in our GI lighting. and it's in this GI file here. And let's have a look at it. And we can see that it's blank at the moment. And the reason it's blank is because, unlike for the other components, we can't actually rename it in the mantra node to ensure that it's put here in the C plane. 
it's there, but it's in this object light plane. And that's not surprising because, of course, in theory, we could have a different plane for each different light. So you can't just put all of that into the C component. So we're going to need to change that for a start. And the way we can do that is using something called a channel copy. And a channel copy is a way of moving data from one plane to another. So what we do is select the plane we're targeting, which is the color plane, and set where we're going to get the data from, which is in object light 1. And when we can see we've moved that data into the color plane. So I'm going to just stick a null down here to remind us what we've got here. And what we've got is GI diffuse contribution. And what we've got here, of course, is the total diffuse contribution. This is the global illumination plus the diffuse lighting from our light source. So if we subtract, one from the other, what we should get is something approximating just the contribution from the light source without the GI. So let's lay down a null again and call this non-GI diffuse. So we've now got our two components of diffuse sorted out. But in order to use these, we're going to need something that approximates to the paint layer that we saw earlier. And we can achieve something more or less like this by looking back here at... Let me just get rid of, of these nodes here, which we don't need for the moment. If we look back here at what we called diffuse earlier, which is in fact just the non-specular component of our beauty pass, if we consider this to be the diffuse lighting, if we divided this by what we think the diffuse lighting is, in other words, this, then we get something that looked like a paint layer, paint plane. So I can't actually divide directly because there's no node that lets me divide. So I'm going to need to do it in several stages. The first stage I need is a function node. And this allows me to use the function 1 over x. So let's have this as our input image. Now, in order to avoid errors, I'm also going to stick a limit node in here. And the limit node allows me to ensure that nothing in this image data that's coming through here has a value of less than 0.01, for example. So we're never going to get a divide by 0, because, of course, if we've got 1 over x here and x is 0, the value of that is infinity, and that's not going to look good. So what this gives us is 1 over the diffuse lighting. So if we then multiply this to with this, what we get is something approximating a paint. And once we've got that, let's lay down a null and call this paint. We can use it to add back our separate components of diffuse and specular lighting. So we've got our two diffuse components here. Let me add a color correct to both of these. Let's lay down that. Adjust non-GI diffuse. And then I'm going to lay down a color correct here, which I'm going to call adjust GI diffuse. Let's 
and then we can add these two components together like so and then multiply them with the paint that we've generated and this will get us some diffuse lighting back again and then we just need to add a specular component which is here and that should give us our image so let me rename this color correct here and call it adjust specular I'm going to just revert it back to its default so that we're not adjusting anything now it will be a good sign if after all of this calculation the result with none of these color corrections actually doing anything the good sign will be if this here is the same as our beauty pass so let me take this down here and add a diff node and then if I feed this into the other side of the diff node we can see that yes indeed we have no differences let me put the display flag back on here because I just want to demonstrate for example turning down the global illumination contribution to the scene in the composite rather than having to re-render and I can do that simply by this color correct and we can see that that has reduced the global illumination contribution quite clearly so that's how to ensure that you can avoid artifacts in your composite so I'm not going to go back and see how we composite over the beach scene here an image of our rendered lounger and I've been through these mantra output nodes here and made sure that they're all rendering out to files and I've also corrected a small error here on the shadows lounger node uh, I hadn't used the shadow lounger take which of course I need to do and to render these all because they're linked together all we would need to do is hit this uh, button at the end here and then select render but I'm not going to do that because in fact I've already rendered them out and here in uh, the compositing network I've laid down a file node for each of those rendered images and if you haven't uh, seen the videos on basic compositing it's well worth watching those because I'm not going to go over in detail uh, some of the steps here so let's switch to our composite view and let's start by visualizing the main and here we can see a color image of our lounger and I've in fact uh, zoomed in on it as you can see and it has an alpha channel it has some specular it has some paint which is just the plain color it has reflection it has diffuse and finally it has the object uh, light render which is in effect the global illumination the ambient occlusion is just white where there should be shadow and black where there shouldn't and the two shadow renders as you'll recall in fact put the shadow in the alpha channel with the color being entirely black and that's the same for the lounger now in order to use the image planes that we've got in here specular paint and so on uh, we're going to have to really extract them so that they exist in the color plane of uh, a node and this is because if we for example take a compositing operation like this which takes two inputs a foreground and a background composite always happens between planes with the same name for example if there's a color plane here and a color plane here it's the two color planes that will be composited over each other we couldn't for example composite the specular plane from here over a color plane from here they're both going to need to be in the color channel so let's just use a copy 
and a channel copy allows us to move into a target plane, which in this case is going to be our C or color plane, one of the other image planes. So in this case, I'm going to move our specular export, and we can see immediately that the color plane has now switched to containing the specular export. And let's uh, call this specular so that we can remember what it is. And I'm going to repeat this for all of the other planes that we have in uh, the image, and I'm going to pause the video while I do that. So I've almost finished that, and I'm just going to show you uh, how to do this quickly, which is to control C, control V. That gives you a copy of the last node, and then you just change uh, this, in this case, to object light, and I'm going to call this GI, because it's the global illumination in fact. Now, I'm not going to use uh, the method that we illustrated in the last section, which you need to use if you have to avoid artifacts. Uh, I don't think we're going to get artifacts in this case, so I'm going to just composite this in the standard way. And in fact, uh, we start, therefore, with the paint layer. And diffuse lighting is simply a case of multiplying the diffuse lighting components by the paint. And in this case, of course, we've got two diffuse lighting components. So let me add them together, like so. And then multiply the paint layer by the diffuse lighting. And it's quite easy to get these the wrong way around. So let's just see whether that's worked. That seems to have worked. But of course, this is rather boring if we're just recreating the image that we, in any case, rendered. Uh, the point of compositing is to be able to adjust your lighting after your render is finished. So I'm going to lay down a color correct, and I'm going to put a color correct in here, and I'm going to put a color correct. Uh, that's the wrong mode. Let me try that again. A color correct in here. Uh, so what this should mean is that we can, for example, adjust our global illumination right down and then adjust our diffuse lighting right down or indeed increase it using these color correct nodes. So the next thing uh, that happens uh, is that we add the specular and the reflection components together and we add them to our image. So let's just bring these down here. And again, let me add a color correct after each of these. Oops. Let me try that again. Like so. And then add these together. And add the result. To the multiply like so. And let's visualize that. And this should be our final image as rendered. So let's have a look and see what that looks like when composite over, composited over a solid color. So let's lay down a color node and that's going to produce a solid white box. And let's lay down an over and let's composite uh, the color as the background and the image there as the foreground and something odd is happening uh, let's downsize this we can hopefully see uh, the reason something odd is happening is that our original image this one is 1081 by 721 
color by default is producing a 640 times 480 image so it's not even big enough to be underneath our deck chair uh, and the way that I could fix this is either here in the color node to change the parameters in the image tab or I can here uh, edit composited settings compositing settings and change the default image size to 1081 by 721 like so and what that should mean is that it's big enough to enclose our deck chair or lounger now we've got a problem and if we zoom in we can see uh, that the frame of the lounger is being outlined uh, with these black pixels we can see we get these sort of odd outlining effect here and we need to try and correct this and work out what's causing it well we'll get a clue if we have a look at the alpha channel for this node here which was the final node in our composite before we put the color underneath and if we have a look at the alpha channel and hit I to bring up an inspector we can see that the alpha here is has a value of 4 and in general alpha should only vary between 0 and 1 so what's going on well sometimes you'll find that this in part comes from your main image if you render to a floating point format you can sometimes find that your alpha doesn't stick to values between 0 and 1 now let's visualize this and I think in this case it's well behaved it uh, is sticking to values between 0 and 1 if it doesn't you can uh, create some problems for yourself uh, if you find that it isn't uh, what you can do is lay down a limit comp here and we can set the lower limit to 0 the upper limit to 1 and we can set a mask so this is only affecting the alpha channel and that will ensure uh, that if there was any problem with your alpha it would be corrected let me get rid of the star here that's important we just want to affect the alpha channel so why is it uh, that we're getting an alpha value here of 4 well the answer is that by default these operations like this add operation here include the mask and include every plane of the image and sorry include the alpha and include every plane of the image so what's happening here with an add node is that we're adding together the alpha from here and the alpha from here and since in fact uh, the color copy uh, the channel copy rather that we did up here to create these nodes doesn't affect the alpha channel we've got the same alpha channel here as we have here so we're in fact doubling the alpha channel and that's a bad thing so we're going to get rid of this star delete that and uncheck uh, unpress the alpha button uh, we're still going to find I suspect that we have an alpha that's bigger than it should be and the reason for that is here this addition here is also adding the two alphas together but rather than correct it here I want to make a remark about how things will work here if we as we should take the alpha channel out of consideration here and let me delete all of the other planes as well so it's just going to affect the RGB plane so what happens if we're not doing an operation with the alpha channel where does the alpha channel that comes out of this node come from well the answer is that by default it comes from the first input which is this one which is why it is important that we have our connections the right way around so in this case I actually want my alpha to come probably from here from my paint and the alpha from here to be ignored uh, because in fact I'm not really working with an alpha channel here I, I'm not uh, concerned about the alpha channel here 
So if we swap these around, we'll, just, we'll get the alpha channel from the original image rather than the one that's been added together here. So we should find here that our alpha channel is now back to well-behaved value of 1. And similarly here, we need to make sure that this input is coming into here, so it's this alpha that will come out the end. And what we should find now is that when we look at our image, we've no longer got any outlining of our bars or our wheels. So, so now let's bring in our shadows and let's start with the shadows on the floor. Let's bring them down here. And we need to composite these over our image in some way. Uh, if we have a look at this again, we'll see that, if you remember right, it's black in the color channel and the alpha channel defines where the shadow is. So one of the things we might want to do before we do anything else is to blur the shadow a little bit. So we put in a blur node that'll allow us <coughs> to blur the shadow. What happens now if we were to uh, just composite this over the top of our image? Well, obviously uh, the lounger will appear to be behind the shadow, which is clearly wrong. So we're going to need to swap this around so that the shadow is underneath the lounger. But again, we're not getting anything. And the reason for that is that, of course, we've got a solid alpha channel here because we've overed our image over a solid color plane. So what we need to do is insert this shadow move before we composite over the solid color. And then we will get our shadow underneath our lounger. And you'll notice here there's a problem with the shadow underneath this, this bit of the, the leg here. Uh, that's because we used a geometry which was, was moving up and down and clearly at this point here the geometry was away from the leg. We'd have to correct that by re-rendering and changing the position of the floor geometry. Uh, I'm not going to bother to do that now. So the next uh, thing is to bring in the shadows which are for the lounger itself. And let's bring these down here and we need to again use an over to composite these over our image. Now in this case we probably aren't going to need a blur but I'll put one anyway and again in this case however we're going to put these shadows into the foreground and our image into the background. The reason for that is because, of course, uh, these shadows were rendered with this geometry in place, so they are properly obscured by the geometry. So that's our shadows. And we can control the intensity of the shadow here on the over nodes themselves. Because if we have a look here, there is... Uh, on the first tab here, two parameters. There are two parameters, foreground weight and background weight. And if we were, in this case, to turn down the background weight, we can see that our shadow becomes lighter. Well, we've now reached the point where it's probably a good idea to introduce our proper background image. So let me lay down a file node. And then bring in our background image and substitute that as the background of this compositing operation here at the end. And the steps that we need to do now are probably to adjust the lighting, to adjust the shadows, and to do an overall color correction.
although actually that's looking reasonably good. So let's start with the shadows. Uh, I'm going to go here to the floor shadows and to the point where they're composited in. And the shadows are coming in as the background, so if I reduce the background weight a little bit, you can see they lighten up. And I might lighten up the shadows on the lounger itself. Although in this case, of course, the shadows are coming in as the foreground, so I need to adjust the foreground. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the lighting a little bit, just to demonstrate uh, the effect of that. I've got a color correct node here, which will allow me to change the diffuse lighting. I can see this, is, this has been set to 1.2 for some reason. Let's revert it to defaults. And I'm going to give this a little tiny bit of a yellow tint, like so. And then I'm going to use two or three color correct nodes, and they've got to be inserted here before we do our final over operation. And there are three that I find useful. HSV. Uh, this allows you to adjust, in particular, saturation of the colors in your image. Saturation is a measure of how colorful, as opposed to gray, individual colors are. So if I zoom in on this, if I were to take my saturation scale down to zero, uh, you can see that our lounger becomes black and white. But in general, rendered images tend to have saturation that's too high when compared to a real background plate. Uh, so I'm going to take that down to 0.8 or even 0.6 so that uh, it's much less saturated as an image. I can then adjust things further using a color curves node. Let's get that right. And the color curves node is also explained in the basics tutorial. Uh, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time messing with these color curves because, in fact, uh, that will be quite slow on this machine. But uh, how you do it is you click on the line, and that produces a point, and you can then adjust that point and adjust the coloration. So I'm going to take the blue down out of this perhaps a little bit, make it less blue. And you probably want to spend quite a while doing that. I'm not going to in this case, spend a long time on it uh, because I'm just doing the demonstration. And finally, I'm going to lay down a color correct, like so. And I've overdone the reduction in the blue, obviously. Let me just correct that again. Try that. And Oops, uh, and the color correct node, the final color correct node, can be used to reduce the brightness of the entire overlay, like so. And in fact, uh, I might even want to up the brightness. Let me just. Yeah, let me do that. Well, you will have spotted that there is one of the renders that we produced earlier that we haven't in fact used, and I'll just demonstrate how to use that. Uh, and that is the ambient occlusion render. So let me bring this down and position it where we can use it. And what we want to do, it's, it's a shadow type effect, so what we want to do is composite it over the rest of our image in the same way that we did for the other shadows. So let's just see what we get when we do that. So let me put an over operation down. And instead of connecting it to there, put that there. And connect the ambient occlusion into the foreground. And as you can see, we get a very weird effect. Because our ambient occlusion, as you remember, is rendered out so that the white areas are 
going to be in shadow, and the dark areas are not in shadow. And we've also got an alpha here for this, which reflects uh, the full chair and the floor. So that's also creating a bit of a strange effect. So we need to ad address this, and we can do that by doing two things. The first of which is to use either a luma mat, or in my case I'm just going to use channel copy, and I'm going to copy into the alpha channel the value of any one of these color channels. They're all the same because it's on a it's a grayscale image. And now what we have is an alpha channel here in this node which reflects uh, the coloration that we had earlier. So however it's still producing this white extra whited out image. So the other thing uh, that we need to do is lay down a color node and insert this in here. Like so. And we want to set this to black. Well, first of all, let's get it to replace the color, but not the alpha. Make sure you select C, not CA. And set this to black. And now we can see that it will composite over uh, some blackness, some shadow, where the alpha channel here is greater than one. So let's have a look at this. It's black on the color plane completely. Alpha channel is like so. The result is as we've seen. But uh, we probably want to reduce that effect quite a bit. So let's uh, turn down the foreground weight. I'm going to turn it down quite considerably. Probably to something like that. And sometimes adding ambient, ambient occlusion to your scene can help sort of ground your objects a bit more realistically in the scene. I'm not sure that it's really needed in this case, but uh, that's the method for achieving it. So that's an example of how to composite a rendered image over a real scene. And if we want to write this out, uh, we would just add a ROP file output node here, and we would choose an image. Let me write dollar hip. Well, in fact, let me let me send it out to the interactive player for the moment, so that we can see it, and I can just render this like so, and it'll render out to M play, and there we have our final composited image. Well, I hope this has been a useful introduction to how to composite rendered geometry with a real background plate.